Welcome back to my channel. It's Bengali Mama here. It's been a really, really long time because I just probably had another baby or something <laughs> and juggling family and work, well, not working outside the home, but work inside the home. We all know if we're moms, all the work we have to do. <laughs> so this has just been a fun hobby that I would do every, so, every once in a while and I really enjoy it. So I just thought, hey, maybe we could do that again because I really love cooking and I love creating and just showing you what I'm learning because I still feel like even after all this time of cooking over the past, what, nine, 10 years, I still have so much more to grow and to learn. And so I'm just inviting you back in into my kitchen to show you what I'm learning. So today we're making just a simple curry that I really love. It's probably a staple. We probably rotate it through our rest, well, through the week of uh, weekly. Um, it is a, just a roasted um, sweet potato curry, which I love, and um, my kids seem to love it too. They eat it, they don't complain, even though that's like rare, because they do. <laughs> They're quite the picky eaters. Um, so we will get started. I'm just so, well, I'm so glad to be back in the kitchen um, filming, and uh, thanks for coming along, so let's get started. Okay, so we're gonna get down to business. I have everything prepped because I didn't want you to have to watch me just cut up a bunch of vegetables. I mean, I like to do that too, but I'm probably slower than most. So we're gonna start out with our roasted, or no, not, we're gonna roast them. This is the sweet potato. I have probably about two or three here. So I'm gonna toss those in the bowl because we're going to mix a bunch of fun vegetables together. Usually I use whatever I have on hand. It's not like a set recipe. The good thing about cooking is that it's so forgiving and actually, Encourage because you can come up with something beautiful with just whatever you have, right? So I also have, okay, so we started out with these potatoes. Um, I also have cauliflower because again, this is what I had. Sometimes I do, um, let's see, I do butternut squash. I've used sweet potato. I use carrots. Um, it's just fun to use, a, I just have really loved vegetables lately. And then we have one of my favorites. This is like the prettiest color, um, purple cabbage. I know it seems like such a like a little humble little vegetable, but I love it because it adds so much color and crunch. And look, already it's beautiful and we haven't even like cooked it yet. So I mix all these together and now we're going to season this because it's gonna go in the oven um, for about 15, 20 minutes at 400 degrees on a sheet pan, super simple. All right, we're going to start by seasoning this really nicely with lots of spices. What I love to use is my masala daba. It's a staple in every Indian kitchen. Um, it varies and you can actually fill with whatever spices you want, but I just like to have them all ready so that I can just, you know, toss them in there. And usually I eyeball, but I'm gonna try to, I'll try to be precise. But again, what I told you before is that you get to be creative yourself. This is just like a stepping stone for you to make this recipe yourself. And you can just trust your own cooking instincts, you know, and as you learn and figure out what you like. I'll show you what I like but it's not like the end all be all. <laughs> so I do like to um, put a little olive oil or I use sesame oil because that is just so fragrant, adds like a, a nice under like nutty flavor. But we're just gonna do olive oil to start because I'm gonna roast these for a little bit longer. So I do a little drizzle of olive oil. I mean, again, you can eyeball it. Now let's get started with the spices. I start out with a teaspoon of turmeric. Turmeric, as you know, again, is a staple in Indian kitchens. It has a lot of um, healing elements in it, medicinal, so I'll sprinkle all that. I also like to add a little chili powder, so we're gonna do a teaspoon of that. And we're gonna do cumin, because some of this might just be like cumin. Boop, boop. And I also like to add a little garam masala. That's one of my favorites. That's just a blend of spices, but already ready for you. And I like to add a little bit of like mango powder. It's just a random little, little extra extra. You don't have to use that. Now I would normally add maybe a little bit of crushed red pepper because we're going to be later making the sauce that it's going to simmer in while these vegetables are roasting. That has a pretty, um, a pretty healthy amount of spice, so I'm not gonna mess with that for right now. Now we get to have fun and get our hands dirty. So we're gonna mix this with our hands. You certainly can use a bowl because, I mean, <laughs> a bowl, you can use a spoon um, because turmeric does uh, stain your fingers a little bit, but just wash them. And it's just, I don't know, I love this. I love this part. I feel like this is me, my love on a plate. And once everything is mixed really well together, we're gonna put that on the sheet pan. 
All right, it looks like everything is a fun, beautiful golden orange color. I'm gonna wash my hands real fast and then we'll finish it with a little salt and then we'll pop it in the oven. Okay, I have to finish with a little salt. So I have a little salt here. Dust a little bit of that. Sorry, something you know about me is that I like sound effects. All right, I'm gonna get my sheet pan right here. I just covered a sheet pan in foil and what we're gonna do is we're just gonna drop the veggies right on there. And I'm gonna toss those down on there. Make sure you get all the fun stuff from the plate. Don't let anything be left behind. Okay. So I spread them all on an even layer. Now the good thing is we don't have to make sure these are complete, I mean they're probably gonna be cooked pretty well, but like I give them a little room, they're a little bit firm still when I, when I take them out because they're gonna finish cooking in the sauce and you want them to soak up all those flavors. Okay, so now that I have the pan, I have it at what, between 400 and 425. And we're gonna pop that in there. Okay. Now while that's cooking, we're gonna get started on the simmering sauce, which is another favorite added element and then it will bring everything together and it'll have hopefully a delicious dish. All right, we are at the stove and we're going to get started on our simmering curry sauce. So we did season the, um, the vegetables with olive oil, but this time I'm gonna use sesame oil because I love it. And so I'm just gonna drizzle a little bit of sesame first. And we're going to revisit some of the spices that we put in the roasted vegetables because it just enhances the flavor. So we're going to add chili again. We're going to add a little turmeric. And a little bit of garam masala. And I like to toast those a little bit in the sesame oil just till they're a little fragrant. And that really opens them up. And it just makes your kitchen smell so nice. So I'm just letting that heat up a little bit. Okay, now what we have here is some um, curry paste, which this one is penning curry paste. I really like this one. I find this one at the Indian market and I, found, I find it at the Asian market. It just is like full of fun things. I am not quite advanced yet to make my own paste. So this really helps me in that this has like chili pepper, garlic, shallots, lemongrass, salt, lime, all the fun things. So we're gonna put that in there and we're gonna also let that toast and heat up a little bit to just really open it up. And don't be shamed into thinking you can't use things in a can because it's just simply not true. All right, after that gets toasted a little bit, we're gonna add coconut milk. I again get this at the Asian market and at the Indian store you can pretty much find it anywhere. But I like this brand. Bleep. Beautiful white cloud of deliciousness. Okay. Now we're gonna stir all that together and it's gonna start to create your beautiful golden reddish sunshiny sauce that has so much depth of flavor. Oop, and some of it kind of landed on the floor. And I'm just stirring that together. And after the vegetables come out, we're gonna toss those in the sauce and let it simmer for, I don't know, a good 10, 15 minutes because I just love for everything to sink in and become best friends and find their way to your mouth. I just love it when everything gets comes together and it creates something whole new, like when you're adding all these different elements and then somehow you created something. How did that happen? And it's really simple. I mean, you just saw me do it. I mean, anyone can do this. That's what I like about cooking. I feel like anyone can do it. Anyone can cook. Look at it. If you look at it, look at all those little tiny little flakes in there. And mixing into the coconut milk. It's just this silky, delicious yumness. All right, we're gonna let that sit, maybe simmer a little bit on low while the rest of the vegetables are um, roasting in the oven. And then when they come out, we will toss them in here and we'll finish it all up. We have
have kind of come to that time where the vegetables, the roasted veggies are gonna come out of the oven. And I actually moved the simmering sauce over here so it's been simmering on medium to low. It's beautiful and deep golden orangish color. And I forgot, we gotta do a taste test because you should always taste test your food as you go. So we're gonna just try this simmering sauce. <laughs> it's doing real good. It's just really smoky and sweet and like full of all those flavors and I'm so glad that we re, re, what am I talking about? You know what I'm saying. When I brought back some of those spices back in there and toasted those first, you can just really feel that chili coming through. It's great. So we're gonna pull out the, we're gonna pull them out. <laughs> oh my goodness, they look so good. So as you can see, they have a nice, beautiful charred color and all the little seasonings have just kind of stuck there. The purple cabbage has shrunk a little bit, but again, those little tidbits of flavor, you don't want to miss out on those. All right, let's put these in the pot. So I just let them go, come on down. Come on down, folks. Okay, don't forget all the fun little treats. Don't leave any little purple cabbage behind. Okay. Now is where the magic happens. We're just gonna stir it all together and we're just gonna let that simmer for a little bit and coat all these roasted veggies in this delicious, beautiful curry. Love it. Now while that's simmering, let's chop up some fresh coriander and some lime. We're gonna chop that in half and we're gonna give it a little squish of that. I love cutting coriander for some reason. It's just so fluffy and such a cheerful herb. It goes in probably 98% of my dishes. And this looks like a generous amount, but I like a generous amount of cilantro, but you, you do you. <laughs> All right, so let's toss that in there. And again, I just love the colors. When food is such fun, beautiful colors, it just it reminds me of a designer who took the time to create all these fun colors for us. So we're gonna stir that in there. We're almost done. I'm so excited to try this. I'm gonna cut this lime in half and we're gonna give it a gentle squeeze. My husband really likes a lot of acidity, so I definitely am generous with the lime. <laughs> Woo. Okay, it's looking so beautiful. Now you can serve this um, over basmati rice. You can serve it with parathas, which I will probably do that today. Um, you can serve it with both. It's just a nice soupy curry for a really comforting rainy day, summer day, a cold winter day, pretty much any time. <laughs> so if you take a look at this, I just love how beautiful it's gotten. So I'll quick heat up the parathas up on the stove top and then we will do the plating and the trying of the dish. Man, we could not have picked a better day to make this curry because outside it's like rainy and cloudy and a little gloomy and all you want is something to comfort you and warm your inside. So this is just the dish for that. So let's plate this up. Oh my goodness. And of course, I love the cilantro, so we're gonna sprinkle a little extra on there just to give it a nice color. Let's try one with just the spoon, and then we'll dip it in with a little bit of um, paratas. All right, I got a little bit of sweet potato sauce. All right, it's the final test. It's probably gonna be hot. Well, of course it's gonna be hot. <laughs> Okay, it turned out really well, thank the Lord. All the roasted vegetables that we took the time to roast, the seasonings, mm, toasting the spices, delicious. Let's hit it with some buttery parathas. Mm. Okay, I'm gonna take a little scoop. Let's try a little cauliflower. If I can get it. Come on, come on little guy. 
I can't get it. <laughs> okay, let's try this hand. Okay. So delicious, so easy, so simple to make. You can make it at home if I can make it at home. And I'm so thankful that you came to visit me in my kitchen and we made this together. So if you're looking for a hearty, simple curry for even a weeknight, or when you have all your friends over, which I'm actually gonna be making this dish for a family meal with our church. And it also, the good thing about it, you don't feel like you're missing out on any, there's no meat in this. And I love meat, believe me, but you are not missing out on any flavor. There's no dairy in it. There's no gluten in it. So it's pretty much a win-win for everybody. So you can make it for your vegan, vegetarian, gluten-free dairy friends, and you can make it for your meat-loving friends, and they probably won't even know that there's no meat in it because it's so hearty and delicious. Thanks so much for watching. Hopefully there'll be more videos in the future because I'd like to do this more often instead of every like couple years, <laughs> and then I'm older and have more gray hair and more kids. So thank you so much for watching. Abar Dokahobe.